Hi guys, my name is Daniel and today I'm going to do a comparison between the Canon 6D and the Sony A7 Mark II. Now let's first talk about their ergonomics. Both cameras are weighed with the battery and an SD card. The Canon weighs in at 765 grams and the Sony weighs 605 grams. And side by side, that's the size difference. However, the Sony with the metal bones is 754 grams, which is practically the same thing as the Canon. Um, Sony is smaller, however, the Canon is beefier in the hands. Again, pretty much the same weight with the metal bones. Sony is smaller. When you attach a Sigma 35mm and an f1.4 to the Sony, it's a huge camera. So, a lot of people say size is like an advantage. No. When you attach a lens like this, it's the same weight and size. Okay, so let's talk about the sensor now. The Canon has a 20.2 megapixel sensor with 11 autofocus points, while the Sony has a 24 megapixel sensor with 117 focus points, 25 being contrast points, both full frame cameras. Now the menu of the cameras, I have to say the Canon has a well thought out menu and it's really organized and it makes sense, whereas the Sony it's all over the place like for example the autofocusing beep um, to turn it off you have to go to the general settings where they should have put it in the focus uh, focus settings okay so now I'm going to be talking about the autofocusing system uh, we already know that the Canon had a, a pretty decent autofocusing system so I'm not going to do any testing with that but I'm going to do a test with Sony and Metabones with Canon lens now in the past, a lot of people have complained about uh, Sony autofocusing with other manufactured lenses to suck, especially with the metal bones. But now they've upgraded the firmware and it's, it's pretty good now. Um, it's really accurate, it's quick, it's definitely usable. Back then it was not usable, but now I would say it's usable, it's good, it's great. Okay guys, now we're going to move into some image quality tests and the Canon's on the right and the Sony's on the left. Now both cameras were uh, set to the same settings, 140 of a second f1.4 ISO 100 at uh, using the same lens, the Sigma 35mm f1.4 art lens. And first things first, I noticed that the colors are quite different on the Canon compared to the Sony and you can definitely see it here in the, the table area. Um, the brown in the Canon is much more brown and saturated than the Sony. You can definitely see it here in the lamp post too. Um, in the Sony it's not as orange. Let me go to 101 here. Yeah, on the Canon it's a lot more saturated compared to the Sony. So that's that's definitely one thing to note here. You can see it on the chair too that on the Canon it's much more saturated. Okay, so now let's get pixel peeping. So right off the bat, I was actually quite surprised at f1.4 how sharp this was. Um right off the bat, we can't really tell the difference. Uh they're both really good. Um Let's see if we get in a little bit closer here. You can't really tell a difference between the two. Um, again, 24 megapixels versus 20.2. Very close in size. Image quality quite on par with each other. And if we zoom in here, maybe a slight edge to the Sony because of the pixel count, but even so, like you would never need to zoom in this far so for me I would say they're pretty neck and neck one thing to notice though is that the Canon has like a different color fringing chromatic aberration going on here um, we can see a lot more pink around the black here compared to the Sony and I don't know what's causing that but it could that's just something that could be corrected so for me not a big deal although there is a bit of a color difference between the blacks on the Sony and the blacks on the Canon. On the Sony I was shooting uncompressed raw so maybe that has to do something with it but that is just something to note. Okay 
So the next test, we have um, a noise test. So again, both cameras were set, the same settings. This is ISO 64, no, no, no. This is ISO 640. And not much difference. As expected, both cameras are performing pretty well at this ISO. Maybe a little bit edged at Canon. It's a little bit cleaner here. Um, but let's move on. Okay. So now we're at ISO 3200. And we can see a difference now. Uh, there's definitely more noise going on in the Sony. So Canon is still holding up very well. Uh, definitely noise here in the Sony. If you zoom in a little bit more, yeah, we could definitely tell more noise here. Okay, so at ISO 6400, again, the Canon is definitely destroying the Sony here. There's very little noise here compared to here. Um, yeah, there's really no comparison. The Canon definitely beats out the Sony here. Okay, so now we went to extremes, ISO 12800. And the Canon is still winning by by quite a bit at 12800. Um a lot more noise. And lastly, we have ISO 25600. And both pictures are quite unusable. Although, for some reason, yeah, the Canon is definitely cleaner. Um, definitely cleaner, but both images still very noisy. Okay, so how's video? Um, with Sony's on the right and the Canon's on the left, now this is kind of weird because for stills, we didn't notice that Canon had a better, more saturated color rendition than the Sony. But for video, Sony is more saturated and more colorful. This is 100% crop and the dynamic range of the Canon is a little bit better as you can see the text on the right. Okay, so let's sum things up here. Here are some sample images taken by me with these two cameras in real world situations. Now there's a couple things I did not mention about. Both cameras only have one SD card slot, which is a huge deal breaker for many professional photographers. The battery life on the Sony, however, is about one third the life of the battery life of the Canon, and they both weigh about the same. Another thing is that the Canon uses an optical viewfinder and the Sony has an electronic viewfinder. The Sony a7 II has built-in stabilization, uh, image stabilization, which actually is pretty good. And uh, as of April 19, 2016, you can buy the Canon new for about $1,400 and the Sony new for about $1,700. You could get the Canon used for about $950 bucks, and the Sony used for about $1,200. But if you want to use Canon glass, then you have to spit out an extra $400 for the Metabones with the Sony. Sony has been playing a catch-up game with Canon and Nikon in the full-frame sensor competition. However, Canon and Nikon always had the edge with the glass selection. But Sony is making a huge step forward in their video capabilities and stills quality. They are also coming out with an L-Lens equivalent pro line of lenses called the G Master lenses, and they're looking pretty good. The Canon can use great Canon glass, but the Sony can also use Canon glass, Sony glass, and vintage glass if you ever wanted to play with those. In conclusion, which one should you buy? Well. I don't know, it's really up to you. Both cameras are great cameras and you wouldn't be disappointed if you picked up any of these bodies. They both have their pros and cons, but they're very similar in many ways. The more economical choice though would probably be the Canon 6D in my opinion. However, if you want the best camera out there, you're probably not going to get it because each of the camera companies will just keep leapfrogging each other. But if you want a great camera today, these two entry level full frame cameras are exceptional.